Hey there, my name is Cal Caliber, and welcome to my Super Team series. This is a hypothetical series in which I take a trainer from any mainline Pokemon games and build a Super Team around them. Of course, I'm not just gonna give them the strongest Pokemon available at the time and call it a day. No, that would be too easy. My goal is to use these trainers overarching themes and personalities to build them a Super Team. I want these trainers to have a few Pokemon that are close to home, as well as some new ones to mess around with. Now, to put everything on an even playing field, here are a few rules. First, all Pokemon in the series will be level 100. Second, they will all have the best nature, EVs, IVs, and the most up-to-date movesets for whatever strategy these trainers are going for. Third, all Pokemon in this series will be holding an item. And last but not least, I will not be giving any trainers a legendary or a mythical Pokemon. Additionally, gimmicks are really hit or miss depending on the generation of games. So moving forward with this series, I will only use gimmicks sparingly in cases that I think they would really need it to give them an edge. As we are hitting the Pokemon League trainers for Season 1, expects these trainers' team to be less monotype than their gym leader counterparts. Alrighty, cue the music please. You know, as somebody who loves Dragon-type Pokemon, it took a lot out of me not to fill Lance's team up with literally all the pseudo-legendary Dragon-types that are available. But hey, let's be real here. He practically has a full team of them in his tournament team back in the Black 2 and White 2 era. Now, don't worry, one day soon, I will do my best to perfect that team. But for now, let's work on Lance's Kanto team. Now, his Kanto team pretty much suffered from the same fate as the rest of his Elite 4 colleagues, and that is a lack of Dragon-types. As such, his team in Kanto is fillered with with dragon like Pokemon. These Pokemon are not actually dragon types, but their design and look feels very similar to that of dragon Pokemon. Compared to the other dragon type trainers over the years, Lance leaned towards having Sky Dragons on his team more than anything else. And so, I want to keep that theme going. Let's begin. Since I want Lance to keep his assortments of dragon-like Pokemon, Gyarados, Aerodactyls, and Charizard get to stay on the team. First is Gyarados. Gyarados has always been known as a pretty fierce Pokemon. Anyone who has ever had a Gyarados on their team would automatically make it one of their powerhouse or signature Pokemon. Well, since Lance is a dragon master, I would bet that he knows a thing or two about taming a Gyarados. Now, this Gyarados won't be your typical aggressive Gyarados. It will still be somewhat scary depending on what you let it do, but this one will definitely definitely has more trick up its sleeves. With Intimidate, it can definitely support the team by breaking down physical attackers. As for the movesets, of course it needs Dragon Dance and Waterfall as the primary way for it to do damage. The chance to flinch from Waterfall is also a good plus to interrupt whatever the opponent has planned. However, the real disruptor here are the moves Taunt and Thunder Wave. I'm making this Gyarados into a bulky frontline Pokemon that will primarily be used to interrupt and disrupt whatever the opponent has set up. As a bonus, Gyarados can eventually match a Sweeper in power if enough Dragon Dances are used. Next up is Aerodactyl. Although this Pokemon is more like a dinosaur, I'm willing to give it a pass since I think it can support the team in many ways. First, speed control is always a welcome factor in any Pokemon team, and Aerodactyl is built for exactly that. With that speed stat, it's an ideal candidate to set up entry hazard and speed control moves like Tailwind. Second, Aerodactyl is just a great leading Pokemon due to the first reason. Unlike Brox's Aerodactyl, which focused more on dishing out damage, Lance's Aerodactyl will be primarily supportive by resetting the field and making sure that the opponent has a hard time setting up. For the movesets, obviously, Stealth Rock will be the entry hazards, while Tailwind is the speed control. Next is Whirlwind, which is great utility-wise. Whirlwind can switch out bad matchups, interrupt setups, and combo really well when Stealth Rock is on the field. To round off this moveset, Aerodactyl will have Rock Slides as its main source of damage. Between Aerodactyl and Gyarados, any setup potential against Lance will not work out so smoothly. The third Pokemon on this team is of course the Charizard. Now I know a lot of you are going to destroy my comment section if I don't give Lance the Mega Charizard X. And you know what? Sure, why not? Lance is the last of the Elite Four and is one of the strongest trainer in the game. So Charizard X will definitely be on this team. This is not his ace by the way, as if you know anything about Lance, don't worry, I'll get to that Pokemon soon. Anyways, Charizard X is a massive Pokemon in literally everything. 130 attack and special attack as well as 100 speed, it's 
more than balance in my opinion. It can do pretty much anything, but for this team, I think making it into a physical sweeper would mesh quite nicely with the ability Tough Claws. As such, I'm giving it all contact moves to fully utilize its ability. Charizard will have Flare Blitz and Dragon Claw as the standard same type attack. Next is Brick Break to break down walls as well as being a good coverage for rock type Pokemon. Rounding out the movesets will be Dual Wing Beats. Again, this will be for coverage and it's good against Pokemon with Focus Dash. Overall, just 3 Pokemon in, Charizard is definitely one of Lance's hardest hitting Pokemon and if you cannot set up properly, it will just run you over. So far, there are quite a bit of physical attackers on the team. As such, the next two Pokemon are all about that special attacks. By the way, these two are replacing the Dragonite clones that Lance have always had and give them more variety to work with. The first Pokemon is Hydreigon. Hydreigon, in my opinion, is very underrated. It has solid stats, move pool, and ability, and it fits Lance's theme of large dragons of the sky. I guess it's also a Pokemon from his championship tournament team, so it's not an odd pick for Lance by any means. Now, Hydreigon is a bit slow compared compared to the other dragon type Pokemon, but with the timid nature, I think it should do fine to outspeed most Pokemon. This high dragon will come with Dark Pose for the dark same type attack bonus, and then it will have Draco Meteor for the dragon same type attack bonus. Rounding out the movesets will be Flamethrower and Flash Cannon for the coverage against Ice and Fairy types respectively. Now Draco Meteor will lower its special attack with every use, and there's really no way to completely negate this effect. But you can, however, stall with the item White Herb. This item pretty much give Hydreigon two full power Draco Meteors before it has to switch out. With this build, Hydreigon can be sent out in most situations, making it a really versatile Pokemon. The fifth Pokemon on the team will be a brand new Pokemon to Lance. Introduced in Generation 8, this is a Pokemon I think fits a Master of the Sky like Lance here perfectly. Please welcome Dragon Pult to the team. Now, Dragon Pult can be built in a variety of ways. From the speed stats alone, some prefer to combo that with a physical attack built because of that 120 base attack. Some prefer to use it as a supportive disruptor, focusing more on controlling what the opponent does. Since Lance already has Gyarados and Aerodactyl to disrupt the opponent, I think for this iteration of Lance's team, Dragon Pult would fit best as a special sweeper. The ability Infiltrator is fantastic on this Pokemon, giving it the ability to rip through Reflex and Light Screens. Not many Pokemon will be able to keep up with Dragon Pult, so I'm making sure every hits from this Pokemon counts. As such, I'm giving it the choice spec so that it can rip through anything, as the goal is to one-hit KO everything in the way. It will have Dragon Pult and Shadow Ball as the reliable same type attack, while Hydro Pump and Thunder will cover the rest of the team. I think with the combination of Dragon Pult and Hydreigon, the special attacker role is exceptionally covered. For the last Pokemon on this team, if it's anything but a Dragonite, I am not a real Pokemon fan. Dragonite has been with Lance since day one, and I see no reason to take it away from him. Over the years, Dragonite has been overshadowed by the many newly designed Dragon types. But after taking a closer look, I think Dragonite still holds up as one of the OGs of the Pokemon series. 600 base stats is nothing to scoff at, and 134 attack is outrageous when you combine that with moves like Dragon Dance. With the ability multi-scale, Dragonite is stupid tanky when it's full HP. That's that's why I think the perfect item for this Pokemon should be a weakness policy. Rock and Ice type are abundant in the game, so therefore it won't take long for the weakness policy to come into effect. Dragonite will of course have Dragon Dance for the boost in attack and speed. Next is Outrage as the primary attack and for a same type attack bonus. Since having full health activates multi-scale, Roost is a fantastic move to recover health and to keep multi-scale going throughout the battle. Finally, I think having Earthquake as the last move will help with coverage, but really, anything works here. Dragonite might be the oldest Dragon by date, but it is definitely not behind. This is a strong team, but it is deserving of a legendary trainer like Lance here. His team in the past were riddled with repeats, which really made him out to be more of a Dragon Knight only trainer. With the addition of Dragon Pult and Hydreigon, his team feels more flourished with powerful Sky Dragons. I like that with this team, Aerodactyl can excel at being a thorn to the opponent's back, while Gyarados can play a more supportive role to the team. Charizard X is a scary boss Pokemon to deal with, while Hydreigon and Dragon Pult ate the rest of the party with special attacks from the back. Dragon Knight is the true end boss, as any Anyone who comes face to face with it will have to deal with powerful outrage and earthquakes. At the end of the day, this is Lance's super team when he holds nothing back. 
Anyways, that's it for Lance, the last of the Elite Four. Join me here next time when we come face to face with the champion. Since that video will be the finale to the Kanto region, please make sure you don't miss out by subscribing to the channel and turn on notifications. Please leave any comments down below and catch that like button for me to help me out with the algorithm. With that all said and done, it's about time I get going. Again, my name is Cow Caliber, and I'll see you, Pokemon fans, later. Bye-bye.